Hi, my name is Solange Woodson, uh, and I am originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Central Africa. I have been in the U.S. for 10 years now. I've been in Austin for six years. And I'm here today to talk to you about Furaha House. Furaha House. And Furaha means joy. It's a Swahili word that means joy. Furaha House came about in 2011 when I moved from Portland, Oregon to Austin, Texas. When I arrived here, I was looking for a place where I could find African food, places where I could go to church, uh, where I could find African people. And there wasn't a place where I could gather all this information. So I took upon myself to go on a journey to find out where Africans actually lived and places where they can direct me to find food, clothes, and stuff like that. In my search for the African food, I was able to find groups of African refugees that came from the Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, and other countries in Africa. And um, instead of showing me where the African store was, um, they started talking to me about the challenges that they were facing here in Texas. Most of them had lived in a refugee camp for anywhere between 7 to 19 years. They have Kid, they had kids that um, didn't have any education from the refugee camp. And they were struggling to find a way to balance life and children and looking for work, learning language, all the barriers that you guys can think about. We sat for hours and talked about how it was back home and how easy it was and even though the challenges but you know they spoke the language they knew where the next meal will come from and now being here they were only allowed assistant for three months and when i'm talking about assistant i'm talking about um, them being able to get rent electricity food stamp and medicaid after three during those three months they will also be learning English, um, and after the three months, then they were basically on their own. They had to look for work, they had to find work, and be able to, as you know, in Texas, it's really hard to take a bus, you know, from your apartments to work and, 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 and back, and so forth. Um, so they had to find a mode of transportation to go to work. And funding, funding work was not really easy because in three months, it is really, really difficult for somebody that doesn't probably know how to write or read in their own native language to be able to master the English language and find work. So basically, you know, most of them worked in, in hotels, uh, doing housekeeping and things that the, the English language was not really required to have. And so really, I figured out that, you know, there could have been a better way of doing things. We needed to see where we were going to go as a community. Um, and so we sat down and talked about the issues that we had, things that we could do. Um, and that's how For Our House was born. Um, in doing this, you know, what we call a community assessment, I was able to identify some of the people that had been in Austin for a long time that came also as refugees and that, you know, stayed here for 10 years, 15 years, and they were now doing better. So we talked about, you know, ways that we could help one another. And um, we chose the name Furaha. is because a lot of the people that we spoke to, where they came from, they came from war zones. Um, they flee their countries because of war. They flee their homes because of war. And basically, after living for, in a refugee camp for a long time, some of them had lost the joy. You know, they were living daily, um, losing that joy. And really, if you are from Africa, I think a joyful face is something that we really long for. We might lack food or water to drink, but a smile is always on our face. So we call our organization for our house, the African Family Center, to be able to help people here in Austin. From the day that we created for our house to today, uh, we have created a program called the Girls Empowerment Program, where 
at some point as we were doing the work, we saw that a lot of our girls were getting married right after high school. And to me, that was really unacceptable. Um, so I took it up on myself to say, hey, we have to create something where girls can be introduced to college life. They will be able to see what opportunities are there for them. Um, and I think just being able to empower these girls and telling them that, you know, now that you, you are in America, you have so many opportunities that you need to take, to take advantage of before you can think about marriage. Um, and, and I think that has been really a positive um, program that, we, that we've created because now we have a couple of girls that graduated from, from college. We have some of them in college that are willing to come back and share their experiences with others. Um, and that's something that I'm really, really proud of. Uh, beside that, you know, we did uh, English classes uh, for newly arriving uh, refugees and um, trying to just offer like language access. Um, most of the time I find myself in different organizations and um, hospitals translating for other people and also advocating for them. Because sometimes you will see somebody that has so many rights but because they don't speak the language, because they don't understand the system, then it becomes really challenging for them to know what to ask for, what not to ask for. Um, and so newly arriving refugees and immigrants and the social service providers, um, we even took it up on ourselves to create a curriculum for uh, culturally specific services. How do you serve Africans, you know? Uh, even if you are a social worker or um, the Department of State and, and you welcome these people, how do you offer them services? What's right to say and what's not to say? Where they came from, what experiences they've gone through to be there, and how you can become more culturally sensitive in the way that you approach issues and challenges with them. And I think that has been so powerful um, and eye-opening for service providers to know serving Africans here in Austin. Um, so that's one portion of Ra House. The other portion of Ra House um, is really brand new. It's like a brand new baby. Because as, as we were working with more women in Austin, we realized that these women had come from places that because of war, because of the many struggles they've, they had gone to, um, they've suffered some type of trauma. And it is really, really hard to find services like mental health services for African immigrants here. First of all, we don't have the language capacity. Um, the training is lacking in, in the few people that can provide those type of services. And we realize that you know, from the abuse that you know, some women experience, um, that even if we offer services here, it's great, but what about those millions of women that stayed back home? What about them? And we needed to really tackle the issue from the root. Yes, we are addressing certain issues here, but we still have issues back home that we needed to address. Um, for the last couple of years, we have been working hard in um, making sure that we open a center in, in the Congo, um, in the eastern part of the Congo, where, if you know, has gone through over 25 years of civil war, um, the place where over 200,000 women have been raped. Um, the last case that I just read was a girl that was only four months old that got raped multiple times. Another case that, you know, I read was an older lady that was 85 years old that got raped. And so to me, when I find cases like this, I cannot sleep, you know. I cannot sit down and have a job and have kids and be happy if I know that where I come from, there are women that are fighting for their lives. And our society is really being quiet about it. Um, so for the last two years, we really worked so hard to go back and open a center for women and girls. Um, girls because we really want to empower them to go to school 
and we know that some families will not have enough resources to provide um, school fees for their children. So we have sponsored 20 girls to go back to school. And for women, of course, we need to address the trauma, but part of our African culture, it is really a sensitive matter to talk about rape. It is a sensitive matter to talk about domestic violence. And so we always have to find ways to work around that. And one thing that we really felt like was important to us as an organization and important to me as an individual is to empower these women to be able to become economically independent. And by gaining their independence, maybe they will find the confidence to address some of the issues that have happened in their lives in a way that they can heal and be productive members of the society. Our goal is to empower these women so that they can become advocates, that what happened to them was not OK. And as a society, we need to find a way to value women. And so it is really a privilege to be able to do the work that, that I do, that For Our House does. Um, because now we have about 30 women that are working on sewing skills, you know, they are making crafts, you know, they are making purses and, and stuff like that, handbags. And what is really interesting to me is some of these women had those skills and they came forward to teach others. Um, and so it is a privilege, and I would invite you to follow the work of Ra House, both here in Central Texas and also abroad. And if you'd like to learn more about Ra House, you can go on our website, www.furahahouse.org, or you can follow us on Facebook, uh, follow AFTV5, and you'll be able to find some more information about the work that we do. Thank you.